Hi, what's going on? My name's John Newby. This is John 2028 Apologetics. Today's video is Are Dinosaurs in the Bible? So whenever Christians talk about dinosaurs and the Bible, there generally are two camps that tackle this, if you will. The one camp is called Old Earth Creationists, and the other one is called Young Earth Creationists. Both agree that God created the heavens and the earth. Now, where they differ is, is that Old Earth believes that God did it over 4.5 billion years ago or so, and about 60 to 80 million years ago, dinosaurs went extinct, and then through evolution, macro evolution, humanity came, but through the will of God. Young Earth creationists believe in a literal translation of the book of Genesis, and that the world is roughly six to 10,000 years old, and that man and dinosaur actually co existed cohabited with each other but yes both agree and both believe and all Christians that I know of generally believe that dinosaurs actually existed and that it's supported in the scriptures and a lot of Christians don't know that so regardless wherever you stand we're gonna look over the scripture and we're gonna show you that the scripture does support dinosaurs now let's go over these verses now one more quick disclaimer, the Bible does use a lot of hyperbole. It talks about God having wings, he obviously doesn't have wings, or Jesus being a door, he doesn't have hinges or a doorknob. It's using words to express, like in a poetic sense. Now some Christians do believe that these descriptions of what I believe to be dinosaurs is hyperbole, and that could be true. But I would like you to decide for yourself. So the first one here is Leviathan. In Isaiah 27, 1, he's called the monster of the sea. It's fierce and great and powerful and gliding serpent in the sea. And in Psalm 104, 26, it even warns about ships going near the Leviathan. And in the book of Job 41, it's talking about how powerful the Leviathan is. Can you even pull him with a fish hook or tie him down its tongue with a rope? It talks about how this creature can't even can't never be a pet and how you can't put harpoons in its side with spears it says any hope of subduing it is false the mere sight of it is overpowering no one is fierce enough to rouse it who's able to stand against me and this is Yahweh speaking to Job about how powerful God is basically God is saying that he is the only one who can handle this Leviathan so now we're looking for some type of dinosaur that might resemble that. And we have the Elasmosaurus. And another popular theory is that it's the Plesiosaur. And again, I'm not going to tell you what to think. You look at these verses and you determine where it is being used for hyperbole and not. And where you believe that if it is describing one of these creatures. And the other creature we're going to look at today is called Behemoth. Now he's my favorite because, you know, growing up playing football, you get called a behemoth all the time by your coaches, especially us uh, linemen on offense and defensive line. So this is where I believe that, that name came from. And we're gonna look at Job 40, 15 through 24. It says it eats grass like an ox, has strength in its loins and its power and muscles of its belly. Its tail is like a cedar tree. So I think that's very important. Its uh, thighs are close knit. So it's given a lot of, uh, detail here anatomically something else is very interesting it says it ranks first among the works of God so what's interesting about that is that I believe it's God's God saying that it's his biggest and strongest creature he's ever created but let me clarify that largest biggest creature biologically living so when you look up the largest dinosaur ever known it resembles this quite compellingly and it's called the Argentinosaurus. I think I'm saying that right. Argentinosaurus. So this dinosaur was over 100 feet long. Over 220,000 pounds. And it kind of resembles this uh, description here in the book of Job. It's also believed to be an herbivore. Which means it eats plants, vegetation. Which is what it also says in the book of Job. So what I've shown you here are the... Some of the strongest verses in the Bible for what I believe to be describing dinosaurs. 
Now, how long ago or how much hyperbole is used, I'll let you determine that on yourself. If I had to give you my honest interpretation, I would say some of it is actually describing it. I feel like some of those verses, it's literally trying to describe you the anatomical structure of this of these creatures and I think sometimes it is used in hyperbole as well and, and we do that today to describe things even with humans like athletes like you know Tom Brady or Peyton Manning you know they have a cannon for an arm or Brett Favre or Pat Mahomes they have a cannon for an arm that's always used or with Drew Brees those were laser sharp precision now I'm clearly saying that they have an arm and they can throw and that obviously means they have hands but I'm using hyperbole to describe it with anatomically, the anatomical parts of their body. So I think that's what it's doing here. I just wanted you to think and enjoy this video. And please like and subscribe. And God bless you in Jesus' name.